officials and police are holding a press conference after a shooting at a Walmart there yesterday where four people were shot. Let's listen in. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Bob Stone. I'm the mayor of Beaver Creek. First and foremost, we wish to say our thoughts and prayers are with the victims and the families affected by this horrific act. Tragedy struck our beloved community Monday evening, and in the face of adversity, the strength of our community shines through. I extend our deepest gratitude to our first responders, especially the Beaver Creek Police Department and Beaver Creek Township Fire Department, as well as all the collaborating jurisdictions whose swift and coordinated efforts undoubtedly saved lives and minimized the impact of this devastating event. Together, we unite in support and resilience during these challenging moments. Now I'd like to pass the podium on to Pete Landrum, Beaver Creek City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Pete Landrum, City Manager of Beaver Creek. I join Mayor Stone in expressing our collective thoughts and prayers for the victims and their families affected by the tragic event that has unfolded. Chief Fiorita, uh, unfortunately is out of state and unable to be here with us today. However, I want to assure you that both I and the entire command staff have been in constant communication with him. We have complete confidence in Acting Chief, uh, Police Chief Captain Chad Lindsay and the department's entire command staff to navigate this challenging situation. In the wake of this incident, our focus extends beyond the immediate response the well-being of our police officers and first responders is paramount. Our police wellness programs and established protocols are actively engaged to support them as they deal with the emotional impact of this event. It's crucial to note that this is an ongoing investigation and information is still in the process of being gathered. The situation is fluid and the details are evolving as the teams work diligently to gather the necessary facts. At this point, I'd like to introduce Acting Police Chief Captain Chad Lindsay, who will provide additional updates and insights to the ongoing efforts to manage and respond to this tragic event. On behalf of the Beaver Creek Police Department and Chief of Police Jeff Fiorita, our prayers go out to the victims and their families of this tragic event, as well as all those who have been impacted by the senseless violence that occurred last night. On November 20th, 2023, at 8.36 p.m., the Beaver Creek Police Department Dispatch Center received the first 911 call of a male who walked into Walmart with a rifle. As the dispatcher was gathering information, the caller stated the man, later identified as 20-year-old Benjamin Charles Jones of Dayton, Ohio, started shooting. Officers were dispatched within one minute, and the first two officers arrived on scene at 8.39 p.m. Beaver Creek police officers heard gunshots and advanced toward the threat, locating the shooter who was on the ground with a self-inflicted gunshot wound at 8.42 p.m. The gunman had shot and injured four adult victims, three females and one male. The victims were transported to area hospitals. As of 2 p.m. Tuesday, three victims are listed in stable condition. One victim is still critical, but also in stable condition. Medics with the Beaver Creek Fire Department were staged at 8.39 p.m. and arrived on scene at 8.43 p.m with transports to local hospitals occurring minutes later. During this time, officers with the Beaver Creek Police Department, along with assistance of several local agencies, continued to clear the building and secured the scene at 9.14 p.m. I want to commend our dispatchers, officers, and fire personnel 
for their quick response to confront the threat and treat the victims within minutes of the first call. Along with assistance from local law enforcement partners, the Ohio Bureau of Criminal Investigation, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms and Explosives, and FBI responded to assist with evidence collection and investigation, which is still ongoing. The Beaver Creek Police Department would like to thank all of our law enforcement partners for their assistance and support during this tragedy, as well as the support that we continue to receive from the community. At this point, I want to draw your attention. We're going to show the body camera video from the first responding officer. You'll see that uh, he arrives at Walmart and is entering the building. As he enters the building, he is uh, searching for the shooter. And at 59 seconds, you'll hear one gunshot. The officer then continues to that threat and then locates the shooter uh, down at the scene. I would now like to introduce Zrinka Delber, who is the Assistant Special Agent in Charge for the FBI's Cincinnati Field Office. Thank you, sir. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, first of all, I would like to start with um, making sure that the families and victims uh, know that we are there, they are in our prayers and we have sympathy for, for them, and we support them in their recovery. I also want to commend our partners at the Beaver Creek Police Department, Greene County Sheriff's Office, Fire Department, EMS, and all other agencies that responded last night. And they responded in handling this crisis very quickly uh, and worked to assist those who were injured very fast. The FBI is currently supporting and assisting the Beaver Creek Police Department in their investigation. And, and as they continue to look at the crime scene, the FBI is currently looking at the shooter, um, his background, his motivation, and possible connections. We are very, very early in this process of uh, uh, looking at the motivation and uh, this process of investigating. Uh, so I, I just want to mention that we're early. Uh, the FBI will continue to thoroughly investigate this matter while we're supporting our partners. Uh, with that, I would like to ask uh, the public uh, if they can assist the FBI in this investigation and our partners at Beaver Creek by uh, calling the FBI and providing any tips, uh, by calling 1-800-CALL-FBI, or by going online and um, uh, going to our tip line, tips.gov.fbi. 
Um, at this time, that's all I have. Uh, like I said, this we are very at, at very early stages of this investigation. Uh, and again, I want to thank our partners for amazing work last night and for their support. Thank you. We'll now open up to questions. Any idea what kind of rifle was used? Yeah, it was a high point 45 caliber carbine long gun. And did he get the, uh, did the shooter, have you been able to look in the background, see if they obtained it legally, that kind of thing? That's part of what we're investigating now. We're still in the process of that. Was there any relationship between the shooter and the four individuals who were injured? Also under investigation. Still trying to. Can you tell to, us anything yeah. about the motive? The FBI is working on that as part of their investigation, so yeah, I don't have any information on that at this point. How many shots were fired total in there, do you think? That is also still under investigation, trying to confirm exactly. More than 10, more than a dozen? I don't have that exact. I can't give you that estimate at this point. Can you talk about the FBI role? Have you had any before That's still part of what we're looking into. It's part of his background and possible motivations. And for the FBI, what information are you looking for? What do you want people to tell you what they call it? Uh, if they know anything about the shooter, we understand that the shooter uh, was a resident of Dayton, um, had moved to Dayton probably um, a year ago. So um, not recent, not fully resident here for years. So if they have any information about the shooter, his associates, potential motives, uh, anything like that. Well, Thank was you. He from here from and where? Did, he, did he have a record, do you know? Uh, he was from here and then recently, not recently, moved and came back here. Do you know where he lived, where he was before he came back here? He was des a resident of Dayton. That's all we know. Uh, do you know 20 years old? Was he a student anywhere? Was he attending school? Uh, I, I, we don't have that information. Do you have any information? Kevin, what can you tell us about any search warrants you may have served overnight and, and what led you to those locations? Yeah, part of the investigation we did um, uh, with the S FBI's assistance conduct a search warrant at his residence. Um, and so, you know, we're in the process of, of gathering that. Um, his vehicle was also in the parking lot, so that's part of the search warrant process also and investigation. Was that, was that the vehicle you towed this morning, the pickup truck? Um, I don't know exactly when that was towed. It would have been probably early morning hours at some point. Do, do we know if he had a record, any history? That's part of the investigation um, to find out exactly what all, you know, if there's any history with him in terms of criminal history. Did he have any family in this area since he was from Dayton? He, he did. Mm -hmm. And you've been in contact with them? Uh, yep, that's all part of it. Family, talking to any witnesses that we can, you know, that we have, all of that. Speaking of the, the pickup truck that was in the lot, <coughs> do you have any information about how long he may have been there? There's been reports that maybe he was sitting there for a couple hours before he went inside? I don't have that right now. Based on what you know about the victims, would you say that this could have been a targeted attack? That, I, I don't have any information about that. Obviously, that's going to be part of the investigation, but I can't comment on any, you know, were if it's a target. shoppers, or were they employees, or a mix? Um, do you want to comment on that? Sure. Uh, I'm Captain Scott Molnar. I'm the commander of the Investigations Division at the Beaver Creek Police Department. Uh, at this point in time, all four victims have been uh, identified as shoppers. No employees, from what we know so far, were injured during the incident. And of this morning, they, he had three in critical, now just one in critical, so they are improving. Um, so their injuries are, are not as life-threatening, is that what you're saying? Uh, their condition is improving. Um, from where it uh, was earlier, the indications that we had yesterday evening, uh, there was um, definitely some concern, but uh, they were all transported quickly uh, by the Beef Creek Fire Department, therefore their medical condition is improving steadily. I know you said three females, one male. Do you know the gender of the person who remains in critical condition at this hour? I believe that is the female. Was she shot in the head? No. Can you talk a little bit about where those shots may have been? You know, were they body cavities, extremities? Like um, I, I can say that the, the, the shots were um, largely random. Um, so uh, they ranged throughout all different parts of the body, and that is, again, a sensitive part of the investigation that we're not going to release right now. How about process ages? Uh, that I really I don't have at this point in time. Adults. Yeah, all adults. Where was Mr. Jones's body found? Um, his body was found just behind the Vision Center in Walmart. 
and the victims are where, where, in, where in the store were the victims? Throughout the store, Throughout the different store. locations one, in the store. At one particular place? Correct. Gray, you call one out is in the cereal aisle. Is that not true? Is that not where this happened or where it started? Or? I don't, I, I, I have to look at the report in more detail. There's so much going on last night, I can't remember exactly where it was. You're still looking for a motive, obviously, and you're still gathering those materials, but you know, did the shooter post anything online, anything on social media? Were there any warning signs that were out there, a manifesto, anything he might have written? Um, at this point, it's really too early to, for, for us to comment on that. Um, I don't want to be guessing here. We, this just happened less than 24 hours ago. We're still collecting all the evidence, so I, I can't really fully answer that question. Oh, do you believe this could be a racial weapon or the that? ammo he might have had? Uh, how, many, how many guns did he have? Just the one? Did he have more ammo? Some of these guys come in geared up. What was this guy's situation? Yeah, he just had the one gun, and we're working on determining, you know, amount of ammo and, and what else he may have had. Do you believe that this could have been a racially motivated attack? We're looking for the motivation. That's why we are working on this investigation with Beaver Creek, but um, we don't know if it was racially motivated or not this time. He's a white male? He is a white male. Sure. Question for Mayor Stone. Obviously, this is the same store where John Crawford III was shot in 2014. Does this bring back a lot of memories of Chernobyl for this community? Well, I can't help but bring back memories. It's, uh, you know, it's a tragedy all in itself, though. This is a, and this is the tragedy we are grieving for. And uh, it's a shame in a way that it has to be compared to the previous shooting. But no, we are grieving and investigating this particular shooting. Thank you. And then what can you say, you know, to people who are getting to the point where they're afraid to go out in public um, because of these kind of things happening? Are there any comments you have about that? I understand those concerns. Obviously, when you see situations like this happen, and it's it's... It's always one of those things where you don't think it can happen in your community. So anytime it does, it's shocking, it's tragic, and it's just another example of, um, you know, the need for people to just be aware of what's going on. The response to this was so, so fast. We had people calling in, um, and everybody just came together to handle this situation as quickly as possible. And as part of that, we always feel the support from the community, and we know that they're there to support and assist us. So, like I said, it's just a, a tragic incident, and it's something that we'll continue to train and prepare, hoping it never happens, but realizing that it's it's always a possibility. Do you know if Walmart was busier because it's Thanksgiving week? Was that time right? I, I don't know if they had if they had any change in their in their shopping population or anything at that point. Right? Po it's possible, definitely. Obviously, he had a long gun. My, or my, Walmart has readers. Did Did anybody call when they just did he try to conceal? I'm sure you check videotape. Did he conceal the long gun? Well, that's still part of the investigation process. We're going through to to review all of that video, review the phone calls, talk to witnesses. Um, the call that we had, the initial call, or like I said in my initial statement, saw him walk in with the gun, and, and then correct, correct. Captain, you said um, you're, you're investigating the motivations. Your shooter is a white male. Are you able to say um, the ethnic background of your victims? At this point, we're not going to uh, release that. Um, that's still part of, you know, what the FBI is looking into as part of their investigation. Can you How far did he get into the store before you I'm sorry. Can you talk about your training? You mentioned uh, ongoing training mm -hmm. for active shooter. What kind of training has the Beaver Creek Police Department done just over the past months, years, because this has been happening nationally. Right. We have annual, what we basically call active threat training, to where um, we have instructors that will um, have a classroom portion of training in terms of tactics, techniques for, for officers as they respond to an active threat situation. And we run through scenarios where officers are actually entering buildings, clearing buildings, responding to the threat. Um, along with that, we also have a, um, a electronic 
um, scenario-based system to where officers can interact with the system. It's on a screen, and so they can run through scenarios in that and practice not just responding to a, a critical incident or a threat situation, but also working on de-escalation tactics and those types of things. You know how long is it stored before you start the shooting? I do not know that yet. That's part of the investigation that they're putting the timeline together. They saw him come in with the gun. Uh, you're talking about a customer? Yeah. Yes. How many and agencies responded to this? Uh, I don't have that number off the top of my head, but we had there, there was quite a few um, agencies from all over. In terms of Greene County, Montgomery County, we had support from everywhere, locally, agencies coming to help us with the scene. and. Um, you know, make sure everything was safe and secure. We see this video of this officer going in here. I mean, that's pretty intense. He has no idea what he's going to face. Looks like he's by himself. Talk to us a little bit about what you see in that body camera. I mean, that's a good way to describe it. You can feel the tension. You can feel um, the, um, kind of the adrenaline going just as you're watching it. And in, in his case, it's, you know, magnify that exponentially. And there was another officer behind him that you didn't see. But their, their goal and their role in that situation is to locate the threat as fast as possible. So at that point, and, you know, that goes back to our training and preparing them for that situation, is as they go in there, that's, it's, it's a one-track mind to get to that threat. And then at that point, when they when they see him, you know he, he had already committed self-inflicted wound, and he was deceased. Then it immediately goes into you know the fire department's assistance and clearing the scene, and, and you know the evidence collection part of all all of that investigation. How long was he in the store uh, shooting, presumably before? I don't have that number at this point, that exact time frame. That's we're still looking into that to piece that all together. There's a witness statement uh, indicating he said anything as he was in the store or walking into the store. Um, we have a lot of witness statements. Some of those we're still trying to compile all those. I don't know that specifically, though. Has Walmart told you when they will reopen their store and when will their employees be allowed to return? I don't have that information. What are their employees doing? Just <laughs> I, I couldn't answer. Yeah, I'm not sure what their, what their procedure or how they're handling it on, on their end. I mean, with these kind of events happening, you know, seemingly increasingly nationally, would you say community response is what you all people should focus on more? I mean, if we're in this kind of situation and the police aren't responding in four minutes or three minutes as if, you know, we were in Beaver Creek in another city, what should people be doing? Well, it goes back to, like I said, trying to do what you can to be aware of your surroundings. Um, um, you know, always be vigilant um, and, you know, know you know, I guess where you're going, what what your activities might be. Unfortunately, there's not going to be, there's never going to be an exact answer or a perfect solution to, you know, to avoid a situation like that. It's just a matter of what you can do if it happens, um, you know, how you can kind of think about to prepare yourself if it happens to get to safety as quick as possible. Call 911 as fast as possible, things like that. So you're, you're mentally prepared if you find yourself in, in a situation like that. Captain, this could be for you or the FBI. As you're looking into uh, the background, shooter's background, any indications of potential concerns about mental health? Like I said, we are collecting all of the information about the shooter and his background right now. Um, obviously, that's something that we're going to look into it really you know, Were there any specific organizations he may have uh, belonged to? Um, do you know where he worked? Any kind of information on him at this point? Right now, we don't have any. I mean, we, we're collecting information. We don't have anything right now that we can share with the public. So the shooter was, is 20 years old. The Walmart is down the street from uh, Wright State University. Um, is there any indication, you know, not necessarily that he was a student there, but he had connections to the university? We don't have any indications right now, Dad. Just a couple more questions. I think you're ready to wrap up. I mean, it was a very 
quick response time, you know, I definitely would like to personally come in, um, do the police never responded, but what can you say went into, I know you also do your annual training, mm -hmm. but that seems like a very quick time for him to be found at 842 when the call was made at 837, I believe. That response time seems very quick. Well, that's something that we are proud of, and that's something that we try to, um, you know, not just a situation like this, a, a critical incident, but in general, um, to respond to the citizens as quick as we can. In situations like this, obviously, it's it's critical to be able to try to deal with it as fast as possible. So that's that's something that we've always done. We pride ourselves on that, and officers are patrolling, responding you know, constantly being prepared for something that may happen regardless of the severity of it so they can deal with it as quick as possible. Captain, All right, if you're just joining us, we've been listening in to Beaver Creek officials. That is acting police chief Captain Chad Lindsay after that active shooter situation last night at the Walmart there in Beaver Creek. Four people were shot. We are learning that three of those victims are stable. One is critical but stable. All of those victims were shoppers, according to Chief or Captain Lindsay. And we do know now the identity of that shooter. 20 year old Benjamin Charles Jones of Dayton. Uh, we're working to learn much more. We have a team of reporters there as as they answer more questions. The FBI looking into the motive for the shooting. They're not releasing many details right now as to the motive for that shooter, but we will have much more on this incident online on WLWT.com and starting on our newscast at four o'clock.